For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Those words are taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. They're especially relevant today in light of the pernicious errors taught by men like Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church and his enablers within the hierarchy of the institutional Catholic Church today. We often hear about how our shepherds must be pastoral and accompany sinners, meeting them where they are in hopes that a good example would lead them to a better understanding of morality and the Christian life. All that sounds good on paper, but rarely does it work well in practice, for our sins can be very comfortable and offer a false sense of comfort, especially when the broader culture of death tells us that sins that St. Paul unequivocally condemned as ones that cried to heaven for vengeance are in fact natural and nothing to be ashamed of. The pressure put on the typical Catholic today is either there to conform to the world or at least not offer resistance. And that lack of resistance is one manifestation of the lukewarmness our blessed Lord warned us about with such force in the Gospels. It's especially pernicious when this lukewarmness is promoted by not only our shepherds, but by the patriarchs in the church. Lost in the mess of the Notre Dame fire and the Sri Lanka terror attacks was a statement made by a prince of the church, Cardinal Joseph Tobin. The statement was on the issue of what the Catechism of John Paul II says about those afflicted with same-sex attraction. Tobin, predictably, said that he found the language unfortunate and hoped it would be changed. I will let you see him saying this himself in an interview on the Today Show in a moment. By now, the Cardinal has received some pushback from the usual conservative, neoconservative, and traditional sources, mostly on the internet. Pushback that I am certain he either isn't even aware of, or, if he knows about it, couldn't care any less about, for this kind of resistance is ultimately meaningless unless a typical Catholic in the pew manifests both spiritual resistance and a material correction in the form of letting him know that heterodoxy on sexual morality cannot be tolerated. And we don't see this today because while a typical Catholic will claim to be pro-family, the truth is that most people fail to understand that Catholic sexual morality is not only pro-family but is the basis of family life. For what we carefully call the marital act is where the family emerges in the sanctity of marriage permitted only in the confines of that same marriage which our lord defined in the clearest terms possible again this sounds like common sense but we live in an age of moral and doctrinal chaos and common sense has become very uncommon but on to cardinal tobin's words you can find the full interview either on nbc's youtube channel or on the today show website Here's the short clip in question. That compassion, along with his outreach to the LGBTQ community, is in the mold of Pope Francis, despite some church teachings. The church, I think, is having its own conversation about what our faith has us do and say with, with people in relationships that are same sex. What should be without debate is that we are called to welcome them. But how can you welcome people that you call intrinsically disordered. Well, I don't call them intrinsically disordered. But isn't that the catechism of the Catholic that is, Church? That is. It's very unfortunate language. Let's hope that eventually that language is a little less hurtful. Did you catch what he's doing there? There's a concept called gradualism that has been in work in the Church for decades, if not centuries, where the various moral teachings of the Church get slackened, first by words, then by actions of those in the hierarchy, resulting in a fundamental corruption of doctrine. And I'm not talking about the development of doctrine as Cardinal Newman spoke of. Some weeks ago, I uploaded the papal document Vix Prevenit, an encyclical condemning usury, which is in that document defined as the charging of interest on a loan. Since then, usury has been re-re-redefined to the point of it being so vaguely defined that it is almost worthless, and pretty much ignored as church teaching is concerned. Oddly, as an act that takes something sterile, in this case money, and makes it artificially fruitful, it is almost appropriate that this same principle is applied to same-sex attraction, which takes something fruitful, human sexuality, and turns it sterile. This is not my observation, it is the observation of Dr. E. Michael Jones, who I find myself citing more often with each passing week. 
If you want to see some of what he has to say on this topic, comment below. I or someone else here will happily direct you to what he has to say on this topic. He is a good Catholic teacher. Needless to say, the concept of a cardinal of the church openly calling for a change to the catechism that he is supposed to uphold should disturb us, but probably doesn't, not in any real sense. We're used to it by now. And for those of you who question why I'm making even a reference to a current catechism, since I openly favor and only typically cite pre-conciliar documents, it's simple. Cardinal Tobin is expected to uphold current governing documents of the Church, which the Catechism of John Paul II is one. But like the written instructions of the more conservative statements in the documents of the Second Vatican Council, the Catechism is free to be used or ignored whenever it suits the purposes of the modernists currently running the Church. This is just the latest example. But don't expect the current language of the Catechism to endure for very long. In April of 2017, Pope Francis appointed Pastor Jimmy Martin to the Pontifical Council for Communication. Given his role at American Magazine, this really isn't that surprising. One of the strong rumors is that Martin has been using his office to fiddle with the online edition of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I've got some evidence that I'll show you to back that up. Watch. You'll see here that Catechism, paragraph 2358, is the section in question. In the published version, the original published version of the Catechism of John Paul II, that section reads as followers, follows. The number of men and women who have deep-seated homosexual tendencies is not negligible. This inclination, which is objectively disordered, constitutes for most of them a trial. They must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Every sign of unjust discrimination in their regard should be avoided. These persons are called to fulfill God's will in their lives and, if they are Christians, to unite to the sacrifice of the Lord's cross the difficulties they may encounter from their condition. Aside from the inclusion of the word homosexual, that reads all well and good as far as I can tell. But the new version reads as follows. See if you can spot the difference. Paragraph 2358. The number of men and women who have deep-seated homosexual tendencies is not negligible. They do not choose their homosexual condition. For most of them, it is a trial. They must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Every sign of unjust discrimination in their regard should be avoided. These persons are called to fulfill God's will in their lives and, if they are Christians, to unite to the sacrifice of the Lord's cross the difficulties they may encounter from their condition. Did you catch that? One simple sentence, in fact, half a sentence comprising seven words, is enough to open the door to moral and doctrinal error that can have catastrophic consequences for the Catholic faith. Yet here we are. Gradualism is the piecemeal changing of how moral teachings are understood, passed on, and ultimately changed into either meaninglessness or into something very different from what they obviously were in time. For a fuller explanation of gradualism, I recommend a playlist of short videos by the channel Ascent of Mount Carmel. If you're not familiar with that channel, you should be. They do good work explaining the teachings of the traditional faith that have been stolen from us. I put a link to, uh, to that playlist on the Sources blog for this uh, video. I don't believe Cardinal Tobin's words were mistakenly said. I expect that it was calculated. What I showed you with the changes to the Catechism I first saw last fall. This has been in place for some time, waiting for the right opportunity to unveil it to the public. I've come to expect that most, if not all, errors promoted by the current crop of shepherds are not errors made by chance, but by intent, and that all statements are made on purpose. This is a conclusion I've come to since reading The Dictator Pope, which dumps water on the idea that the current crop of leaders are bumbling people who say things they shouldn't, or don't even mean to, in press conferences or in interviews. Instead, everything they promote is the product of cunning fueled by a desire to finish the revolution of the Second Vatican Council. If the desire of that council was to open the windows of the church to the world, then the world, which is now in a constant state of revolution that can only be described as moral and spiritual anarchy, then the moral doctrines and dogmas of the church must always change as well. Since sudden overt changes can't happen without pushback, they come in piecemeal, done through a gradual change in first how the lady understands sins that the world is in love with, then in how the church addresses those same sins, then finally if the church deems them to be sins in the first place. One needs only to look at the current push for communion for those and so-called civil marriages to see how the playbook is being used. So what is the lay faithful to do? 
First, you must heed the words of Our Lady of Fatima. We currently live in the late stage of the Fatima warning. Her message is to do, is to do prayer, do acts of penance, especially for those who have no one to pray for them, to stop sinning, and to defend the family at all costs. She gave us various mechanisms on how to do this, including the keeping of the five first Saturdays devotion. I have a video from fall of 2018 on that topic for those who are interested. Above all, be rigid in your defense of the faith of our fathers. It is the only faith that saves. All others are false gospels to be resisted. Thank you for listening and for your support. If you want to support my work, there are options in the description of this video. I ask that people continue to pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.